How's it going, Gothamites? My name is Boba Talks, and welcome to any new lovely ladies and gentlemen joining this video. Uh, this is uh, the much requested Who Are the Flipping Villains at the end of Season 4, or just more talks that John Stevens has said about the villains coming to Season 5. Uh, so I'm not going to do like a major rundown origin of every character in this video. I'm just going to go over them, discuss what I think Gotham could be doing with them, because if we know one thing, Gotham tend to do things quite differently, and, and I really respect them for that, and, and I've always said... Uh, you know, shows shouldn't copy and paste exactly from the source material uh, from the comic books. So anyway, guys, if you go on to enjoy this video, why not like it? And if you're brand new to this channel, why not subscribe for more freaking comic book freaking videos just like this. So at the end of season four of Gotham, the city was plunged into complete darkness and, and it became the Gotham we all know and love. And now that is not to say that Gotham over the past uh, few years hasn't been, you know, Gotham City because I remember in season one watching it for the first time, I just loved the shots of, you know, Penguin when he came back from being uh, shot, supposedly shot into the docks and you just saw him on the streets, uh, really, really rough. I just remember feeling that feel of Gotham falling in love with the show in season one. Uh, but now it's really really Batman's playground, as I like to say. It really is uh, the, the cause of the rise of the Dark Knight. And that is obviously what season five is going to be all about, the fifth and final season. The last 10 episodes, which has now been confirmed, by the way, uh, with Bruce rising into Batman. And, and what we also saw at the end of Gotham season four is that the villains, uh, due to what Jeremiah did and, and everything like that, uh, we're taking sectors over the city and if does if that didn't feel comic book to you Then I don't know what gets more comic book than that because Gotham City when it's Batman's playground And what I mean by Batman's playground by the way is just when the city of Gotham when the Dark Knight is basically here Even though we haven't quite got him yet. It's been born in Bruce uh, And it's been coming for a little while now, but this is the personification Which I, I really like using that word of of what is to come uh, with with Batman. We heard Jim Gordon say something, I'm paraphrasing, among the lines, you know, we're going to have to take back the city block by block. Who knows where we're going to be at in season five? Have they already, you know, done a few blocks by then? Uh, ha has the GCPD established some control back? I highly doubt that they've established a big bunch of control. Uh, but there is, we have to bear in mind, a bit of a time jump by a few months, several months. So anyway, we saw villains like Mr. Freeze and they were like, oh no, no, this is our sector kind of thing. And he was just like, not, not anymore. And then just like froze them. We saw Firefly saying, I want you guys to do this, that, and this, that, and that with that flame and this flame over there. We saw Scarecrow with the lovely iconic hat. Honestly, guys, you know, I've mentioned this before. If you've been watching me for a while, I freaking love Scarecrow's costume design. And now he's got the freaking hat but then we saw villains which everyone has been asking about. And I, and I apologize, by the way. It's taken me a little while to get this video out. I was just taking a little bit of a break, trying to do other things. And, you know, shows are off season now. So, and, and especially since Gotham is airing in March, we've got a lot of time to do videos like this. So I, I'm not too worried about it. But here we are. Here we, here we are. And these villains, I believe, I believe, I'm, I'm not, do not quote me on this, uh, were Man Bats, which I think that one's fairly obvious. Uh, possibly Mother and Orphan, but I'll get into why it's a kind of possible kind of scenario kind of thing. And then there are other villains that executive producer John Stevens uh, spoke about that are coming to season five, such as Lady Shiva. And that's a kind of confusing thing within itself, because you know what I mean by that, if you know a little bit about the comics in terms of, you know, the whole mother and orphan thing, but also the long awaited ventriloquist uh, and Scarface. And ugh. But at the same time, a teeny, teeny, tiny, little bit worried about how they're going to fit all of this into 10 little episodes. Or are they, is it going to be a bit long with the beginning one or the, the end one? Two hour finale, maybe? I don't know. What do you guys think? But that's a whole separate video that I want to make. There's so many freaking Gotham videos to make. But anyway, first, let's talk about Man Bat, or at least who we assume to be Man Bat. Uh, now, this is quite controversial with this villain. Everyone... Uh, who I have spoken to has been like, I'm not so sure this villain uh, should be in next season. As cool as Man Bat is, and as many people love Man Bat in the comics, uh, or whatever, you know, however you found out about him. Um, when that scene came on, even I was a bit like, hmm... Uh, and, and I love, I love Gotham. You guys know I do, but I do not not have criticisms with the show. Uh, and, and what I mean by this and what I think other people are feeling when they see this, uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, is just that there's some things that do not translate to screen as well, unless you have a freaking huge budget like Game of Thrones with the, how much they pour into their freaking dragons. And I'm not saying man bats, wings are dragon-esque, but it, it just does look a little bit risky. And and now the question I want to ask 
Is this the same character that we saw in the Freaks back in Season 3? Now, if you remember back in Season 3, uh, you know, and this all ties back to the Indian Hill stuff with Hugo Strange uh, reviving Fish Mooney, Fish Mooney getting the uh, Freaks, liberating them, uh, and then um, that was in Season 2, really. And then in Season 3, she rolled around. Um, and then, for example, there's this photo, if you remember back with James Gordon, tackling this very man bat like person. And now this is what he looks like. And now you can see with the nose, it looks a little bit different. And in fact, I believe the man bat we saw at the end of season four, his nose is just normal. Now in this season three version, uh, you can see it's, it's designed to be a bit more, how, how do I put it, like vampiric, if that's, is that a word? But you get what I mean. But what I will say is that um, the claws, the, the kind of long fingernails or whatever you want to say, uh, on his hands are the same. You could argue that this person has just put a mask over his face, and that's what we see in uh, the end of season four. And and at the end of the day, the freaks kind of just disappeared anyway, I believe. Um, so yeah, this could be the same character. And if it isn't, then that would be a bit silly, I think. Why? What? There was really an Indian Hill freak who just just looked like Man Bat. And yes, I know you could say, what about the Killer Croc s character that might not have been Killer Croc? Well, fair point. But I just want this person. It may as well be Man Bat. Like, you could argue uh, he's just been in Gotham for a year doing this, that, and the other. And that is who we see at the end of Season 4. Either way, guys, let me know if you're excited for this character. Let me know if you also think that is the same character, or should I say Freak, or Metahuman, whatever way you want to put it, that Indian Hill created than, you know, in season three. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what you guys think about that. Now, as for the nose and stuff like that, I pointed out, yes, things just do change uh, between seasons. Designs change. Um, like, uh, and it's kind of, you could argue plot wholly, but they, I guess, with these kind of things on TV, maybe they should pay a little bit finer attention if this is the same character, because it's like, how did this guy regrow his nose back? But they're kind of plot holes shows hope that you forget about, I guess. But, you know, I could be wrong, and it might not be the same character. They could just be two very similar metahuman-y kind of people. But I, I don't think so. We'll have to wait and see. Now, the next one everyone has been asking me about. Everyone. And, and live streams and everything. And this, uh, I actually didn't talk about too much in my review because of this video. And, and, and... It actually kind of creeped me out. Uh, I don't find Scarecrow scary or anything like that. I, I, I like horror films. I, I love to hate them kind of thing. Uh, because I go in there, I want the thrill, but I love it. But I do get scared shitless sometimes. Um, you know, I didn't find it that scary. But when it comes to freaking like dolls in this orphanage looking place and a kid stabbing some guy over and over again with freaking expressionless masks well kind of like a, a, a weird kind of small expression on his face that is just creepy and 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 just like when i learned in school many years ago even though i look freaking 15 those masks that people wear on their face can't remember what they're called for the life of me right now like a mime-esque mask um the reason why like people perceive it and uh, maybe you guys already know this to be strange because your brain doesn't quite understand it's like you kind of you look human but your brain's like confused it's like it, it perceives it weird so that is why i always find dolls and masks like this more scary than Scarecrow. And I know Scarecrow, you could use the same analogy. If you want to argue that point, I guess Scarecrow's face mask and stuff like that is just not as, like as human looking. Uh, but a face mask on a face is very similar. But it, 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 it isn't. Boba doesn't like this. Now, the very interesting thing about this, and this is why I mentioned at the beginning of the video, like, we have to remember how Gotham does things differently, and this is potentially what I think they're doing here. Uh, if you remember, like, for example, characters like Theo Galavan was uh, Asriel. And now I know Asriel has been, like, a mantle thing in the past, but there's other characters who they kind of portray differently on the show, might not even be the same freaking name as the person in the comics. It doesn't really matter. I'm all up for new iterations like that. And the point to this is that, for example, Orphan and mother in the comics are completely different people than what we're seeing on screen here or who everyone is thinking is orphan and mother now what i will say is that i definitely think that this is gotham's potential version of orphan and mother now this is where it gets a little bit confusing orphan in the comics is cassandra kane she's worked with the bat family uh she's worked as a, a secret operative uh for bruce she's been like an assassin she's got a history of the league of assassins and it's just like wait what 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 i think if i remember correctly in some other version she's been like a bad girl or a black bat her parents were like david kane and her mother and and, and often referred to him as mother in in this occasion is lady shiva and lady shiva i'll be talking about in a second so this is very interesting now obviously this lady right here who is on screen as well with the creepy ass mother effing mask is obviously not lady shiva so 
I would have to say that this is some maybe weird new invention. I'm not sure because I did try and look up because I'm not mega versed in the comics uh, as some people maybe think I am about any other orphan or mother characters. Now, unless you guys can find anything, I would love to know, but I can't really find any other unique, you know, creepy characters like this, you know, as orphan and mother in the DC comics. So I think Gotham maybe are uh, using the orphan and mother name uh, and using on these two characters but this is where there's wild theories going on as well and people are thinking that this lady right here uh, could be Sophia Falcone now what now I do kind of get where this is coming from like this is an orphanage right uh, and you see creepy dolls I, I guess it's an orphanage there's a lot of beds for children uh, the city's plunging into darkness god knows what's going on here and who else set up an orphanage Sophia Falcone now everyone has now been deliberating as well what about uh, the you know the freaking act his names because that's been found out as well i can't remember for the life of me the names but then again you wouldn't use those actors in a 10 second scene you know like crystal reed uh for for mother here potentially mother um and whoever this kid is um so i get the argument but i really don't think it is sophia falcone that would be interesting i suppose i can imagine it they definitely wouldn't have got her in it would have been a stand-in actor and there has been many occasion before where they've had stand-in actors uh with different kind of hairstyles um, and then like they bring in the actual actor and they, they kind of change it a bit and then that kind of goes back to my things they kind of hope you forget about kind of thing but then there's also word that this kid could be like freaking Martin and I'm just like no uh, I, by all means I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong but anyway guys um, this is interesting I personally think that it could be a new thing and, and that would be really cool uh, tr kind of as I always say loosely very loosely adapting from the comics but here it kind of be a very big change I'm not sure I would love to know what you think in the comments below but there is a there is also a chance that it could bring in orphan and mother with the introduction of uh, lady shiva uh and an orphan could actually be a much much younger version um of the orphan character we have in the comics uh, as a hero in gotham city that is being set up you know along these 10 episodes as bruce is rising as batman kind of just you know universe building even though this um show is ending this season but as i said guys um tricky one this one i would love to know what you guys think in the comments below now let's move on a little bit more to what i just talked about with a uh, lady shiva now lady shiva a lot of you know a lot more popular than what i just spoke about um she has a daughter who is uh, cassandra kane uh, she is freaking combat obsessed she is regarded as one of the most freaking like uh, insane martial artists in you know the world alongside freaking bruce wayne of course and people like you know richard dragon and, and whatnot now i'm very excited for this character because she's the kind of character he doesn't really give a crap and she kind of just lives life for the thrill of the fight kind of thing and and she's just a total badass so i uh, i do wonder how they're gonna do this i'm very excited but i'll go back to what i said all these characters over 10 episodes so unless they're like doing a two hour episode one and like a two hour finale uh, which also makes it reach syndication because as it stands 10 episodes is makes it 98 episodes not 100 so confusing thing there but as i said i guess another video lady shiva has been an antagonist to, to many characters like including batman but she's not exactly like a mega evil person I mean, sometimes she has been, but she's kind of like an anti-hero, but not always, you know, she's a bit of a problem. She's not a good person. She's not an ass, ass, asshole, if that makes any sense. But she is at the same time, uh, more or less kind of an, uh, an, an annoying asshole, I guess, to people like Batman and other people like that. Now, I kind of got a little bit of a theory. And now, I'm not sure how much I like this uh, at the same time, but I've just got a feeling and I hope I'm wrong. Now, with what I mentioned earlier with how Gotham likes to change things up or use their existing characters to kind of give known comic book personas to these characters. I'm thinking they might use Barbara um, as like the Lady Shiva kind of thing. Now, that may sound completely whack because Lady Shiva and everything I've explained, and if you know who Lady Shiva is, like she's Chinese and everything like that, I just think that they might be trying to give that title or that name to Barbara. I really hope I'm wrong. Um, but that, that would kind of save them having to introduce like a whole different character. Uh, this would also potentially ruin it for so many people, but some people may really love it because, you know, it might make Barbara a lot more interesting. I would love to know your thoughts on that, but it just makes me think of it with the way they set Barbara up. Uh, Lady Shiva has a history of like the League of um, Assassins as well. Uh, in this case, the Shadows in Gotham. And plot logic as well. Barbara has been trained to be this badass in the show uh, by Rachel Ghoul ha has himself. Um, and also there's a little bit of the demon's head essence in her. Uh, there's all this uh, painting stuff as well. And that got very, very mysteriously kind of still explained with not too much answers by Raish. So I don't know. I know that sounds absolutely whack. I'm not saying it's right at all. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, but yeah, obviously I prefer Lady Shiva just to be introduced 
uh, uniquely into Gotham. Now, as I keep mentioning, and I'm going to refer back to it again just once more, um, I'm worried about how they're going to fit all these characters in. But at the same time, if they're very small appearances and, you know, it kind of feels like, you know, oh, it's cool, like, because we're getting the Batman Gotham we're, and we're getting Batman himself by the end of uh, Season 5, maybe, just maybe, they're just using characters like this, implementing them. So... It just feels even more Batman, so we can imagine Gotham, the TV show, if it went on for seasons in our head, that, you know, the, oh, this, these characters are there, and we can imagine it even more, and that's why they're using them in the last season. Now, let's move on to the last one, guys, and this is my most anticipated one, and it has been for the show, believe it or not, for a very long time, and some of you will know this already, because it's been in uh, the kind of uh, script mill, I don't know, uh, the character mill uh, for quite a while. Danny Cannon, uh, he, he's been working on this show since the very beginning. He's an exec executive producer. This is the one episode he's always wanted to do, uh, or the one character, and that is, yeah, the ventriloquist and Scarface. And if you know who the ventriloquist is, he is a guy by the name of Arnold Wesker, and he has a puppet uh, known as Scarface, uh, or also known as Woody. Now, obviously, as you guys know, in the comics, there are multiple different takes from characters characters multiple different iterations or reboots in a way for example uh cassandra kane lady shiva's daughter also known as orphan that i spoke about earlier in the latest run of comics you know known as rebirth if i remember correctly orphan is uh one of uh, batman's vigilantes in the young kind of vigilante program in gotham that batman and batwoman are running so yeah it, it completely kind of changing things up a little bit but kind of keep, keeping them same z same with arnold wesker people have been debating or they've kind of fiddled with the idea in the comics if arnold wesker's uh puppet is ha actually has a mind of his own or is it that more common story of the mental illness in a kind of dissociative identity disorder kind of way kind of thing which is more realistic i guess but there are stories out there i, I can't remember for the life of me right now probably how it goes but you know a load of people died in prison or something like that where the wood was and, and and arnold who was in prison at the time or something used that wood to create um you know scarface and that it kind of became a thing uh, but it wasn't concretely proven to be his own thing so but you could argue you know the ghost in the spirits and there is supernatural stuff in the dc world so you never know but i obviously choose to believe it's more that this arnold wesker guy is a very disturbed person uh with a uh, mental disorder and even though he will appear very kind of feeble um and innocent in a way and and is more of a puppet himself to scarface um he really is you know through his disorder uh, obviously doing this and Scarface is the real real gangster villain uh, doing all of these horrible horrible crimes so there you have it guys those are the villains as far as I'm aware I I, I don't think I've missed one out if I have oops but uh, that are coming next season they might splash something else here there and wherever they're there in the season but maybe not as they have you know got to do so much with Bruce's storyline um, and I guess you know these characters are very dark I feel like they are going extremely dark with this like last season because well, of how it ended. Look at the city. Uh, look at the sectors that were getting gained by the villains. It's absolutely insane. And it's such a shame. And I said this in season four. I'm glad we got to season five, even though it is kind of underwhelming in how I feel like we should have more episodes. We're losing kind of Gotham just as we get Gotham. You know, it, it kind of sucks that way. But I guess... You know, we have to be grateful for what we've got. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts about everything I discussed. You know, definitely some of the more uh, confusing stuff that I spoke about with Mother and Orphan uh, in the comments below, guys. And also, I'd really, really appreciate it if you left a like on this video as it really does show your support for the channel. And if you're brand new to this channel, why not subscribe for more videos just like this? Also, I do really quickly want to say that um, I'm looking for video suggestions. So if you guys aren't aware what my community tab or what a community tab is on YouTube, just go... And click on my channel icon or something like that that gets you to my youtube homepage, uh, my channel homepage. and you'll see like home videos and i believe community uh the latest post is me asking for video suggestions so post them there we've got a lot of off season now so i will be making video suggestion content unless obviously there's some news that comes out but for example this was a video suggestion content so be sure to post your suggestions there of course i want to say thank you to all of my patrons if you are curious uh in becoming a patron head to the top link of my description it is a way that you can really fuel the content that i create on this channel and support this channel 
even further. You get rewards for doing so, so definitely check out what, what that's all about if, if you feel like you want to. Other than that, I do have social media. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. That is where I'm most active. Um, and I do have a Discord server where we all talk, the Boba family. For those of you who are there, join us there and we can talk more about Gotham and other shows. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.